Before we start, I just wanted to let you know that the first part of this series now has a text version. It's available at usergames.net. The link will be in the description below. Last episode, we set up a client and a server using the enet library. The client was able to connect and disconnect from the server. We can see this in action here. Bam, bam, connected, disconnected. In this episode, we will be creating a simple chatting application. This one, to be precise. If I start the server here, and I start the two clients, asks for my username, and uh, user games. We can both connect. We can be quite a few in this little chat room. Hi, hello. It's a very simple chatting program. Chatting program. And uh, yeah, this tutorial series is focused on the basics of Enet. That means I won't be showing you how I actually made the interface itself, but you can make your own interface, hooray. But if you do want to use mine, I'll leave the code in the description. It's these two files here. I completely separated the chat screen logic from everything else. That way we can focus on what's more important the networking code. Due to the fact that this is a terminal program and I'm new to creating terminal apps, I didn't create a key pressing system to detect what key has been pressed every frame. Instead, I've used a normal get input function provided by NCurses, the library I used for all the terminal visuals. This stops the entire program and waits for user input. This means we can't receive any messages while we are typing, but fear not, I've conjured up a complicated solution that solves everything. You'll notice here, that the the cursor is where it should be, where we're typing. If I type something here, he can type something else. But the minute I hit enter, you'll see that his cursor has moved because the cursor was moved here and did the typing, but kept the code here. And if you keep on typing, the cursor comes right back. Now I haven't done anything too complicated, but I did use multi-threading. Basically, the get input is in one thread and receiving all the messages is in another thread. But don't worry about it. Don't think about it and just focus on the ENET code. If you're watching this, I'll assume you probably have your own applications you want to implement this code in. So just focus on the ENET. I'll explain it in the most unbiased way what the code does and where it should be placed in a normal program, like last episode. For instance, here, the two threads can be visualized as just two functions in a normal application or something like that. Without further ado, let's get started on this tutorial. I'll continue from where we left off last episode. So as I just said, we're going to be continuing on from where we left off, uh, but I have added the two files to the client, the chat screen logic. It's not been implemented yet. I'll show you how to add it to the main file uh, right now. So we're gonna start off with the client. So this is what we have since uh, our last episode. It's pretty simple. We just connect and disconnect and all that. To show how we're going to implement the chat screen, I'm going to remove all of this temporarily. You can either do this by deleting it and putting it back by having a backup, or you can simply just comment the whole thing. And that way this is not being used at all. So the first thing we want to do is include the chat screen header file. Next, we're going to create a static chat screen and call it chat screen. And we'll take our variable and we'll, we'll call the init function. This initializes the screen. And in a while loop, one of which you would probably want not to do while true, just like last episode, you want just this to be the main loop of your application. And we'll in fact add a way of quitting the application this time. So that's good. But for now, I'm just putting while true temporarily. Next, I'll create a string and I'll in fact include, I think it might be a part of IO string, but just in case I'll include sh string. I'll call it message and it's gonna be equal to chat screen dot check box input. So this is the, the get input. This will stop the entire application and wait for the user to input within that little box at the bottom. Once we've got something, 
from the from the box once our user has hit enter what he's entered will be stored into the message variable over here msg and then we can use chat screen dot post message to put it on the screen in the chat log post message here takes two parameters the username which i'll just input username and the the message itself which i'll put it takes in the c string of, of the message. And that's it for setting up the, the visuals. Now to compile this, you're going to need the ncurses library along with the chat screen C++ file, the main C++ file. Uh, because I'm doing some character and string conversions a little off, we need to be permissive with, with the conversion. It still works fine but uh, I would do a proper conversion in the future and use right the correct variables. And then we want to export it to build a.out. You want to add a dash before the L of your library. Oh, and string is not capital. It's, uh, it's lowercase. So there we go. And you can see here what our fpermissive is doing. Basically, uh, we're converting a const character pointer to a character pointer. Uh, I'm still like new to C stuff, so so yeah. But nonetheless, it works fine. If we were to uh, to to run our program, it looks just like the the original. And we can type here, and we can hit enter, and you can see that it writes username, and we can type here, which is what I wrote. Hooray! but we want our user to be able to uh, select our username. So uh, we'll, we'll add that now. And maybe also a way to exit. In fact, we'll do that first. We'll say that when you write just the word exit, or how about if you write the word slash exit, that it exits out of, of the app. I haven't done that in the original, but I can't imagine that it'll be that complicated. Hi, this is me from the future. So it kind of crashes when you try to exit normally, probably due to the f permissive stuff so i would look into how to properly use strings and constant car arrays car arrays character arrays anyway back to the video the enet code is still valid and if we want to exit we write if we write exit nothing should happen well we should write exit and if we do slash exit oh all right that definitely caused some issues but it did it did close out all right with the last thing here at the start the very start i'm going to ask our user what his name is even before we connect to the server though i guess we could do it after uh but i'm going to do it now because we're going to send our username to the server when we connect to it see the thing is is that i'm trying to learn some c so i'm kind of writing c and c plus plus and i think i just the c code is really interfering with my normal process of stuff but it's fine we'll also include so we'll include c string we'll include the standard io.h file so we're gonna ask we're gonna say please enter your username we're gonna store a variable called username that's gonna be size of, of 80 characters that should that should be fine right that's a big enough array and then we'll scan f we'll 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 check and we'll scan f a, uh, a string, which we're going to store in a reference to username because we want it to actually change the username variable. And we can just get uh, grab this username and plop it right here as, as the variable. So now if we compile, we execute, what is your username? We could write that, hello, and now it writes correctly. Perfect. So now we got the start of what the client actually does. Now we actually want to incorporate the ENET code into what the user does. So now we actually got the client up and running. Now we got to set up the client ENET code, actually the actual networking code. So most of the start is going to remain the same. Let me just uncomment all of this. So all of this is going to stay exactly exactly the same the ip 
Same thing as last episode, you can set it to whatever you want. But this being localhost, I'm using port 7777. Uh, but right here, where the game loop starts, we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to remove this and write code that is uh, similar to it later on. But this is where our actual game loop is. Uh, and the enet peer disconnect will we'll, uh, we'll plop it at the bottom. But first things first, let's identify our, all of this is a disconnect code. Okay, so there you go. So we're gonna disconnect after the game loop, which now is our little running while loop here. So that remains the same. And uh, before is what is changing. So now we're going to uh, receive data a bit differently and we're gonna send data. So first, let's let's start with a way uh, of sending data. I'm going to create a function here called send packet and this function is a function we're going to use whenever we want to send a packet. So it's going to take in two parameters, the enet peer that we want to send the packet to and the data that we want to send, which will be a constant character pointer. Next, we're going to create our packet by creating a enet packet variable. It's going to be a pointer. I'm going to call it packet. And it's going to be equal to enet packet create. So this takes in three parameters. It's going to take in the constant character pointer of our data. Then it's going to take the length of our data. So the size of our data is the string length of our string plus one which I believe that is for the zero terminated. Is that, is that what it's? And lastly is a flag, which we'll use enet packet flag reliable. This, will, uh, this means that the packet will reliably be sent kind of like a TCP packet. So we want to make sure that this data is indeed received. And finally, we're going to use the enet peer send function to send our packet to the peer. So we're going to send it to the peer peer that we're passing in on channel zero. That could be a, uh, a parameter for later, but since we only have one channel, when we initialized our server in the first part, we're only going to worry about channel zero for now. And finally the packet that uh, we want to send, which is this packet here that we just created. So this is now complete. We now have a way to send a packet and we got rid of our way of receiving packets, but the server can receive packets. So let's test that out right now. Let's start by calling our function here, send packet. It's gonna take in our the peer uh, that we've already created, which is the server that we're, uh, we're connecting to. And then we will send some data. This is some test data. So now if we launch our server that we haven't touched, so it's the same server as last time, you see nothing is being displayed. It should display the fact that we've connected first, and then it should print out the data that it received and some information on that data. So let's give it a shot. First, let's compile our new code. Oops, I forgot to uh, add the uh, enet library back in because we do want to compile using enet. And I also forgot that we actually do want to include enet back into the application. So if we compile now, we still have an issue. Oh, the enet packet over here takes a capital N. It's enet. And just like that, it compiles successfully. So now if we prepare to execute, we still have our server up and running over here. If we run the, the program, it asks us for our username. So nothing has happened just yet. I'll, you can put anything here because we're not really using it aside from locally. And if we hit enter, Okay, well, it says that the connection succeeded. So I'm just assuming, you know what it is? It's because we're not actually receiving any data yet. And I remember this being an issue when I was writing the last episode that uh, that this was an issue. So I believe that we just need to to start uh, receiving data as well. So so let's do that right away. See if that's actually the, the, the 
problem and uh, we'll see afterwards. So this is the weird, um, so th now we're gonna do the weird multi-threading thing I was talking about. So really don't worry about it. Over here, I'm gonna create a function called message loop. So this function, you'd create this function for, uh, it's basically we're updating to, to see if we've received any new information. This is where we're going to put our enet host service function that we used last time to receive data. But because this is going to be in its own thread, this is going to be a, a void pointer. And we're going to put another while loop in here. They'll do its own thing. And just because this is just not working, might as well keep things simple and, and we'll fix things in the future. For now, let's do while true and everything is going to be fine and dandy and we'll just force shut out of it. If anything, you know what you're doing. So over here in, in the message loop, which would be in its own loop being called somewhere in a normal loop, but because our program stops, I'm calling it in a separate thread. It should still work nonetheless. We'll uh, create a enet event, call it event while the enet host service client. So yeah, here we're going to want to, to pass in the client itself that we want to use. So um, I explained this function in the last episode, we take a reference to event so that way we can change the event variable and know what our event is on channel zero, I believe. No, that's uh, we want to wait to um, zero milliseconds. Although now it doesn't really change anything, you could wait one second um, for as long as there's no events. And Heck, if it if we go over the, the, the timeout, then it just repeats the loop anyways. So there's really there, in this situation, there's no loss in doing this. But in a normal application, you might want to set this to zero if you need real time data receiving, if you're not doing this in a separate thread yourself. So just set that to zero. And then we want to switch through the the event type. And in the case that it is a enet, the type is an enet event type receive, then we will do something with the data. For now, I'm just going to use the, the same thing that we were using uh, in the last episode. And I forgot if I did this in the last episode or even if we should do this, but we could destroy a packet after we receive it since we don't need it anymore uh, afterwards. Nonetheless, let's get our server back and running. Let's compile our client and Let's see if this works. Username is that. Okay. Well, it says connection succeeded, so... Oh, it's not working because we're not calling this function. That might be a good idea to actually call it and do something different. Wouldn't you say? All right, I'm tired. So we're going to include... Uh, we're going to include pthread to do our multi-threading. This is just if you're following exactly what I'm doing. Like I said, I don't suggest doing this in its own. Th well, I mean, you can do it in your in, in your own thread, but not to solve the problem that I'm solving by putting it in its own thread. And we're going to 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 basically run this function in its own thread, which is just the while loop, which will go on forever and over and ever until we tell the thread to to shut off and it'll, it'll shut off on its own. So over here, um, this must be the worst tutorial. Really, listen, if you're focusing on ENET, it's a great tutorial. That's all you need to remember. Focus on the ENET, which speaking of, we're about to create a thread. Okay, so after we initialize the chat screen, we're going to create a thread for network message or, or just for receiving data. So we're going to, to to do this. You do pthread t, call it thread, pthread, create with a reference of thread. This is an important, the function that we want to, to run. And the, we're going to pass the client argument as well because we do want to use the client. So this is going to use uh, the shared, a, a shared memory. So it's, it is using the same client. We're going to, to join the thread back before we do that. All right, well, let's give this a shot. So we still have our server running. So let's recompile. Oh, it didn't work. Uh, and define reference to pthread 
create. That would be because that's because we actually have to right. We have to uh, to uh, include it in our our compilation like everything else. So uh, let's just let's just put it here here at the start. So lp thread and that should be fine. I think that compiled successfully. So let's give it a shot. So if I run this, write my name, there we go. You see, I told you, I knew what the problem was. So now that we're receiving data, we're able to receive the fact that we've connected and and it, it does its thing. So, so like a connection is actually established and both can make sure that data is being received. And you'll notice that we didn't only receive a new client connected from that, but a packet of length 23, 23, containing this is some test data. Yeah, I think that uh, we did the plus one for the zero, uh, zero ending string, uh, was received by us. So perfect, um, data is being sent, it's being received. And if I type something though, you'll see that nothing is being sent. So let's do something about that. So in our little loop here, we could really simply, as we post a message, we could also send a packet. So we can just send the packet, which as you remember, takes in the peer and the data. So we could also send our username instead of, 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 uh, of this. So if we send a packet of our username, packet of our message, we can try to recompile, we'll launch the server, recompile. So if we join in, we can write all oh, my username is Ezra, a new client connected from that a packet of length five containing Ezra was received. So it received our username. So we could use this uh, to, to create like a, a actual object or, or, or structure or something containing all of the data of a single client connected client. So here we're sending a username, but maybe if we we're playing a different game, we'd want to send uh, items or something. So usually the client would not send that to the server. The server would send that to the client, but nonetheless, the code remains the same and it could be used for customization uh, things. So if we wanted to send, uh, well, we can send input, we can send anything and here we can send the chat. So if we, uh, if I type something here and hit enter, a packet containing a uh, a packet of length 25 containing if I type something here was received from us on channel zero. That is perfect. So you see everything is fine and done and we're actually receiving the data. And because we know the uh, this here, um, it's uh, we, we can know who's sending it and we could reference back to the username if we create a actual cl uh, class or structure, which we will be doing. But now there's a few issues uh, that we're going to come across that I will explain now so that we can fix them. In fact, it's getting kind of late and I would like to upload this video before this weekend. So I will sadly leave it here, but don't you worry. Part two will release next week alongside a text version and we'll begin with the explanation that I was talking about that I was about to do. There might not have been as much ENA code in this video as the last one, but I think the introduction was necessary. Next week's video has all of the ENET code, so don't you worry about that. We're getting this engine started. I'll try to make these videos less long and more to the point in the future, but for now, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped at least a little, and I'll see you all next week.